station that's working for you. This is 2 News at 10 on Dayton CW. Now at 10, a fatal shooting outside an industrial building in Dayton brings federal agents and SWAT teams to the scene. The timeline of events that led to an hours long search for a suspect. A plus a man found guilty on murder charges. How a fight at a local bar last year ended in gun violence. But first here at 10, one man is dead and two others are in custody after several law enforcement agencies, including the FBI, surrounded a massive warehouse in the eastern part of Dayton today. We have team coverage for you of the events that unfolded. We start with Zach Pitts. He's been at the Davis Linden building all day where that shooting happened. Zach, what do we know about this situation? Hey, Brooke, good evening to you. Well, I mean, call this trying to find a needle in a haystack. That's really why there was such a large law enforcement presence here earlier today. And the Linden Davis building, or the Davis Linden building, I should say, excuse me. It's a rather large warehouse building. You can take a look right behind me. And that's, again, why there were so many law enforcement agencies here on scene trying to find one of the suspects. Now, officials tell us, as you mentioned, one man is dead, two are in custody. And we're told that this all started out as some sort of fight and it escalated to that shooting. And that is when that active shooter call was put out. Now, one of the suspects was arrested when officers arrived initially on scene and every available law enforcement officer in the county was called here to the scene because there was just a lot of ground to cover to find that suspect that was involved, that other one that they couldn't track down. And uh, officials believe that that person went inside this massive warehouse. Again, this is the Davis Linden building. Uh, there are multiple ways to get in and out of this building. A lot of places that one could hide. So after sweeping the building multiple times, officials learned that the suspect was not inside and was actually later arrested about 20 minutes away from the scene in Centerville. Officials are still working to determine if there's any sort of connection between the shooting and those who work at the Davis Linden building. This large warehouse has been converted into multi-use uh, businesses, so I, I don't know at this time whether it's related to a single business or not. Now, officials did not release the name of the suspects or the victim involved in the scene. We, of course, are working to learn much more information. Once we do, we'll, of course, pass that along to you. But uh, the one thing that we can tell you that the Dayton Homicide Unit is investigating this incident. Reporting live, Zach Pitts, 2 News. All right, thank you, Zach. He talked about the building. Let's take a closer look at the Davis Linden building and the scope of what authorities were up against. This is an aerial view from Google Earth. Given the size of this building, you can imagine how long it would take to search it floor by floor, room by room. Now, the building itself used to house the Davis Sewing Machine Company when it moved here from New York in 1889. And by the 70s here in Dayton, that building was multi-use. Today, several arts and photography businesses rent spaces there. Business owners say this building is kind of like a maze inside. We talked to a man who was inside the building as authorities arrived. Seth Bird is live there to explain how this man and other witnesses described the situation. Seth. Authorities say the building was not easy way to navigate with only one way in and out, which of course made clearing the place difficult. Brian Schaefer, who owns a production company in the building, was on his way to a convenience store when he heard police. I was on the second floor looking out the window. I thought there was something happening across the road. Ran back and grabbed one of the cameras, uh, walked out uh, that door, and was surrounded with guns pointed at me and escorted away. Um, I did give them my keys to get into the secure doors and kind of gave them a rough layout of the building. It's a confusing building. Brian Schaefer said he knew there were people in the building when law enforcement were securing it. Schaefer noted the space was difficult to navigate and told police before they went in. It's insane because it is a secure building. There are, you know, there are locks on it. Like, uh, this particular uh, space where we believe things have happened, it's not confirmed. Um, it's kind of just a street level um, you know, space. Uh, Tristan Webster had only been living near Linden Avenue for six weeks before the incident. He was walking to a store around 11 a.m. when he saw police talking to a group of people. Minutes later, Webster says the situation escalated. We seen a cop on the corner um, with an assault rifle, and then we seen them starting to block off the streets, and that's when we were like, something, something big happened. So Webster said he never had seen anything like the police presence on Linden Avenue. It seems like a lot. I mean, we've seen feds, we've seen 
black SUVs tinted out. So um, every kind of cop, we had Zini cops, uh, Heber Height cops. So yeah, it was, it was interesting. Sherry McNeil says there's been other issues with guns in the neighborhood, so she is not surprised by the day's events. But it's just people these days, they just don't want to talk or vocalize or fight with people. They want to pull guns out. And that's just not it. Dayton police caught the second suspect in Centerville. Two news followed law enforcement to this parking lot where that man was eventually arrested. Live in Centerville, Seth Bird, Two News.